look at the picture on the screen. Over here, you will find that a man has gone to the shop to buy certain goods for his daily needs. Now, once he has selected the goods which he wants to buy, what is the first thing that the man will have to do in order to buy these goods? The man, if he wants to buy these goods, will have to pay a certain amount of money to the shopkeeper so that he can take these goods with him to his home. So, in order to buy these goods, the man will need to spend some amount of money. So, we can use this analogy in order to explain energy. So, what can we say? We can compare goods with work and money with energy. So, just like we are having to spend money in order to buy goods, we have to spend energy in order to do some work. So, what can we say? In order for us to do some work, we need to spend some amount of energy. So, if we want to buy a greater quantity of goods from the market, let's say we are planning for one entire week. So, we have to buy goods that will last one entire week. So, in order to buy more quantity of goods, we need to spend more money. Similarly, if I plan for only one day, so in that case, I will need to buy a lesser quantity of goods. So, I will need to spend less money. Thus, if I compare goods to work and money to energy, I can say, in order to do a greater amount of work, that is for a longer period of time, I will need to spend more energy. Similarly, if I do a lesser amount of work, I will need to spend a lesser amount of energy. Thus, we see that more energy is required if we have to do more work and less energy is required if we have to do less work. So, let's say that I have to run for 1 meters or in another case, I have to run for 10 meters. So, in which case will I require more energy? Obviously, to run 10 meters rather than 1 meters. So, when more work is being done, more energy is required and vice versa. So, we can say that the energy of the body is its capability or its capacity to do work. Now, energy, just like work, is also a scalar quantity. It does not matter in which direction the energy is being spent. As long as energy is being spent, it is sufficient for physics and energy has no direction associated with it. Thus, energy is a scalar quantity. Now look at this picture. Over here, you can see the latest version of iPhone. Now let us suppose that a man needs to buy this phone which costs rupees 45,000. So what is the first thing that the man will need to do? If the man wants to buy a phone which is worth rupees 45,000, then the man will have to spend an equal amount of money. That is, he will have to give the shopkeeper 45,000 rupees. If the man gives the shopkeeper 40,000 rupees, it is not going to work. Why? Because the amount of money in that case will fall short from the price of the phone. So we can derive this analogy and apply it in case of energy and work as well. So we can say that if goods is compared to work and money to energy, just like to buy a definite number of goods, we need money that is equal to the total price. Similarly, in order to do some units of work, an exact equal amount of units of energy will have to be spent. Thus, the number of units of energy being spent will be equal to the number of units of work being done. Or in other words, the amount of work done will depend on the amount of energy spent by this relation. The amount of energy spent will be equal to the amount of work done. Now, the unit of work we have seen is joules. And since they can be equated with one another, we say that the unit of energy is also joule, represented by the capital letter J. So, we can see that one joule of energy is defined as 
the energy required to do one joule of work. So if I'm spending one joule of energy in going from one point to another, I am doing one joule of work. Now here are certain other units of energy. Over here we have defined one kilojoule. One kilojoule represented by kj is equal to 1000 joules. Or this is also equal to 10 to the power 3 joules. And one megajoule represented by mj is equal to 1 and after that 6 zeros joule. So it is equal to 10 to the power 6 joule. Now we have seen that power is equal to work done divided by time. You will recall from our previous lectures. So if I rearrange that equation, I can write work done is equal to power into time. So from this particular relation, let us find out if we can get any other units for work done or energy. Now we know that the SI unit of power is what? And over here we are considering 1 R for time. Now we know that 1 Watt can be represented as 1 Joule per second because power is work done per unit time. And 1 hour is equal to 3600 seconds because 1 hour contains 60 minutes and each minute contains 60 seconds. Thus 1 hour has 3600 seconds. So when I multiply this amount with this, I get 3600 joules because second and second minus one are getting cancelled and I am getting 3600 joules equal to 3.6 kilojoules. So one watt hour represented as WH can be equal to, can be equated to 3.6 kilojoules. So one watt hour as you can see is one unit for work done or energy which is related to joules as 1 watt hour equals 3600 joules. Similarly, we find out what 1 kilowatt hour is. So we write 1 kilowatt into 1 hour. 1 kilowatt is nothing but 1000 joules per second multiplied by 1 hour which is 3600 seconds. So we get 3.6 into 10 to the power 6 joules or in other words 3.6 megajoules. So what can we say? We can say that 1 kilowatt hour is equal to 3.6 megajoules. So these two quantities watt hour and kilowatt hour are two other units through which work done or energy spent can be represented. And as you can see these units are much larger units of energy and work done.